Hooray! <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Let's stand and worship the Lord. That's why we're here. the rain. 
Good morning, friends, and welcome to Fairport Christian Fellowship. You may be seated. I like calling you friends. Uh, am I your friend? <laughs> you guys are way too far away from me. <laughs> uh, we're going to open this morning with a scripture from 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy, has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. I'm not going to dive into the whole verse. I'll probably be doing it a little bit later. But to start us out this morning, do you have hope today? It says here that it's a living hope. It's alive. And why is it a living hope? It's because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Bottom line, because Jesus was, he didn't stay in the grave. He rose from the dead. Resurrection, because of that, we have a living hope. And I want you to think about that today. I mean, that's the title of the message, A Living Hope. And so you can have the message right now and we could just leave, right? A, a living hope. That's what you need to have today, tomorrow, this week. Uh, you know, God says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. They're not evil thoughts. They're good thoughts. They're good plans to give you a future and a hope. And that's where I want us to be today as we come into his house, a future and a hope. Let's pray. Father, we thank you today that because you live, we can face tomorrow because you live. All fear is gone. We have a future and a hope. And Lord God, as we come into your house today, we come with an expectation, an expectation of a God who is able to do anything. Uh, we have a living hope, Lord God, that is going to be eternal. But Lord, even today, this day, and tomorrow, and this week, we can live with hope in our hearts and an expectation. So, Lord, I do pray that you would do that for your people today, that we would have faith and believe in our God, that you will take care of every need that we might have. You will direct us and guide us. And for that, we do say, blessed be your name. We thank you today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you're able, stand with us and we'll worship. Okay, the Bible says that there are some number of elders, I can't remember how many, that are up in heaven casting their crowns before the throne. 24, my wife says, thank you, um, saying, worthy is the lamb, right? Is that right or is it the, um, the they say that too? Yeah, worthy is the lamb. Yeah, so I guess I'm confusing the 24 elders and the uh, the angels. Yeah, that's what this song is about. The cry, holy, holy, holy is the Lamb.
Jesus is my king during the week. He's my king at home. And the next song says that I'm a child of weakness and that I should watch and pray. And that's true too. And when 
before the throne I stand in him complete I will lay my trophies down all down at Jesus feet next song is Celebrate Jesus, and I don't think we should sing it uh, with a solemn tone and voice. So it's good for us to remember our sin and um, everything we learned the last few weeks about Jesus dying on the cross for our sins, but today's message is about his resurrection and the fact that he's not dead. And amen. So help me celebrate. <laughs>
something different and offer a clap offering to the Lord this morning. <laughs> Lord, we praise you, and we just declare today that we believe that you are raised from the dead, and we thank you for the work that you did on the cross, and we ask your help to give us faith. We know your word says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So build us up, Lord. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 You know, Bernice, uh, I kind of, when I was, we were doing that last song there, I just kind of pictured you with a tambourine. <laughs> and maybe a cowbell, too. Not you, maybe somebody else. We need more cowbell. <laughs> but it is a celebration today. It is a celebration. We'll get to that in a few minutes. Uh, <clears throat> a couple announcements. This week, okay, this coming Saturday, women's Bible study, 10 o'clock, Saturday morning, Galatians, okay? And uh, also, you can see back there on the side and in the back, there's announcements uh, there. Uh, December the 5th, we are collecting donations for the Open Door Mission. We're collecting them back there. I see that people have already done that. Bring them in by December 5th. Uh, items that are needed, children's winter's clothing, children's coats, winter footwear, diaper, pull-ups, bathroom tissue, facial tissue, paper towels, sugar, coffee, dairy creamer, boxed breakfast cereal, and canned soups for the Open Door Mission. And also kind of going along with the Christmas season and an opportunity to bless others, uh, no matter how much you have, whether it's a little bit or a lot to give, a surplus. Uh, it's good time to be mindful of others who don't have what you have or what we have. And so there's a, a Christmas collection for two families that live in the Pines. One family has four children, and one family has one seven-year-old boy. So you can see the details back there. Those uh, clothes and, and things need to be brought by December the 19th. So keep that in mind, okay? You may turn in your Bibles today to Matthew 28. Okay, did you hear me? Matthew 28, not John 20. Okay, Matthew 28. And uh, we are going to do John, the first verse of John, but that's as far as we're going to go in John today. You know, I, I promise that I'm going to complete the whole chapter next week, 30 more verses after that. But John covers something that's a little bit more personal, okay? John covers things that happen with Mary, a personal encounter with her. He was, she was the first one that he presented himself to alive. And that's a very personal kind of thing, and there's a, a special message for that. And then it's going to go on where he meets with his disciples, okay? But that will be next week. I wanted to, I, I know that there's a message this week. It's a message that is of hope and rejoicing and the power of the resurrection. And to do that, really, I think we need to look at Matthew's version of it, okay? Matthew 28. Let me read to you what happens in John 20. It says, Now the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early while it was still dark, and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. And then it goes on. We'll see what happens with Mary, but we'll see that next week. We need to live in the celebration that we just were saying about. You know, because as Brian mentioned, we have been studying over the past few weeks how Jesus went to the cross, and that it was a painful type of thing, and it's not easy for us to look at, but it's there for us to see. Well, now is today. Today is the day of victory, okay? And so we're going to enter into that today. I have entitled this message, A Living Hope, that we, we read about in the first verse when we opened up the service today, A Living Hope. I thought, well, I had a couple other titles too, 
uh, I could have said rejoice, and you'll see that in here, right? Rejoicing. <clears throat> also, I could have named it, we have seen the Lord, what the disciples will say. We have seen the Lord, you know? Uh, but the Lord wants you and I to think about today and tomorrow and this week and live our lives with an expectation and a hope. So it's a living hope alive in your life. You know, hope deferred, it says in Proverbs, makes the heart sick. You know, you have something in your heart you're hoping for, but it's deferred. Okay? It's tarrying. It's not coming. It makes your heart sick. But then it goes on to say that when the desire is realized, it's a tree of life. It brings joy and expectation. That's what he wants us to, to live in with an expectation that he is doing great things. I had you turn to Matthew 28. I'll read verses 1 <clears throat> through 8. Follow along with me. Now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and he sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow. And the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. <clears throat> but the angel answered and said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, I love that, as he said, what God says he's going to do, he does. As he said, come, see the place where the Lord lay. He rolled back the stone so that they could come and see that he's not there. And go quickly, tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And indeed, he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to bring his disciples' word. Now, like I said, next week we'll see a little bit more detail. And I, I ask you, hey, if you got time this week, read every account in every gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John of this day, because you might see different pictures. And you might even come up with some questions. But we'll get into more detail of that next week. Like I said, as a personal encounter with Mary, with Peter and John, and all of the disciples. But for today, we look at this portion of Scripture. You know, it's a living hope because of this very thing. We have a hope in our lives, and it's alive because Jesus is alive. And He's not dead. And we need to remember that today. But we see, the, we see what happens here. It says again that Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came at the first day and the, the week began to dawn. It was the first day of the week. What day is that? What's the first day of the week? Sunday. Yes, it's Sunday. Today is the first day of the week. This is the beginning of our week this week. But Mary and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And... We know that from what I read in 20, uh, John 20, verse 1, it was still dark. The sun hasn't risen yet. And so you can imagine as we read the next part, behold, there was a great earthquake. An angel of the Lord descended from heaven, came and rolled back the stone from the door, and then he sat on it. I, got it. I just like that picture. He just sat down you know it's done uh, it, the lord i mean god himself dispatched this angel and he said hey go and roll the stone away and yeah go ahead sit on it and you'll you'll be talking to some people but i like it says in the next verse his countenance was like 
lightning. You ever see lightning when it flashes across the sky? You know, for just a split second. But this was not just a split second, but it was bright. I, I'm contrasting that it said it was not yet light. It was dark. It was a very dark morning, and all of a sudden, this great light shines. It's an angel. It says his clothing is as white as snow, and the guards shook for fear. Now, these are guards that are not afraid of anything. <laughs> angels that's another story they shook for fear and they became like dead men what, what were they in shock or something like that went into shock seeing this that's how matthew describes it to us they became like dead men but the angel and he answered and said to the woman don't be afraid for i know that you seek jesus who is crucified now these two women, or there was actually more than these two, they came to the tomb early in the morning. Were they seeking Jesus? Yeah, they were going to continue to anoint him. They, they were seeking someone who was dead already. They were, had no clue that he, he was going to be what, what was going to happen. I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. I love these words. He is not here. He is not here. I didn't roll the stone back so he could get out. He didn't need. Uh, actually, we'll see the details. When John looks into the tomb, he sees the bedclothes, the clothes that he was wrapped in laying there. He didn't get up and remove them. He just went through them, and they lay there just like that. Kind of reminds me, what's it going to look like when we're raptured? <laughs> Piles of clothes everywhere. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I was, yeah, hardware too. I, I got a hip that's going to stay here. <laughs> the hip is going to stay here. It's going to, it's titanium. It's just going to dink. <laughs> look around. <laughs> But clothes that, you know, if there's such thing as charity in those days, they'll have plenty of clothes to give away. They can have my whole closet. But that's what it looked like. John looked in and he saw the bedclothes there. He is not here. He is risen. Kelly last week said, because I warned you guys, we're going to be doing Easter. Happy Easter, by the way. How come I'm not wearing a tie? <laughs> Kelly asked me, can I put up the Easter stuff? There it is. He is risen. And over there on the table, there's a little display of the three crosses in the empty tomb to remind us today. He is not here. He is re risen as he said he would. Come see the place. where. That's why he rolled the stone away, so they could come in and see. See where he was? He's not here. And I want you to go tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. It's going to give us more detail. He, God's going to say to those angels, go, go tell them. Go, tell them to tell everybody and make sure you tell Peter. Isn't it funny that he pulled that out? Go tell Peter. Why? why? Because Peter had denied him. And he needed to hear good news he is going to go before you into galilee we'll give you a meeting spot just go up to galilee and he will meet you there there you will see him behold i have told you so they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy that's what this day is about great joy and they ran to bring his disciples the word this day is all about the power of the resurrection this day is all about victory in jesus it's all about death being defeated sin being defeated by jesus christ and that's what we we're singing about you know I, i'd like you to turn in your bibles now to first corinthians 15 
Uh, I'm going to read a couple different sections from this chapter. Again, I will tell you, if you get a chance, read the whole chapter. It's a very victorious chapter. It's one of celebration, but I can't read the whole thing to you. I've chosen two sections of it. Verses 13 through 19, I'm going to read first. Paul is speaking here, the apostle. He said, if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty and your faith is also empty. Why are we here? That's it. Why are you in church today? Because Jesus is alive. And that's the bottom line, basic answer. Because He lives. Because He lives, we live. And we live together in His house. What Paul is saying, if there isn't any resurrection from the dead, Christ is not risen. He's still in the tomb. And our preaching is empty or void or vain. And your faith is also empty. Yes, and we are found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that He raised up Christ whom he did not raise up, if in fact the dead do not rise. Did you understand that? For if the dead do not rise, then Christ is not risen. <laughs> and like I said, if that's the truth, if that's what, what's going on, why are we here today? And what would we be doing? Or what should we be doing? If we didn't have that hope in us, we would, yeah, you know, just like we talked about last week. You know, my subject matter expert. When you're dead, that's it. That's, that's it. Where'd you get that information? Oh, I just think it's that way. Whoa. Man, you got no hope. That's basically what it is. You have no hope. I preached that message last week and Bernice came up to me and, you know, she always has something to add to it. And she's right. If he's right, he drink and be merry, right? If I'm right, and it's more than me being right, it's the Bible being right. That's what we talked about last week. The Bible says it is not the end. And we saw that with Jesus. He was alive, and he's alive today. In verse 16, it says, For if the dead do not rise, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Then also those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. It's over. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men the most pitiable. We are the, the apostles. All of us actually are most pitiable if, if it's only this life. If it's only this life. If it's only this life, you might as well go and try to get all that you can get at the expense of others, right? But that's not the case. We have a hope today. It's a living hope because Jesus is alive. Because the stone was rolled away. And because the angel did say, He is not here. He is risen. Paul would say in 1 Thessalonians 4.13, but I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, those who have died. Lest you, you sorrow as others who have no hope. Someone passes on from this life and they did not have Jesus Christ. Their sorrow. There is great sorrow. They didn't have any hope. But we're not like that, Paul is saying. 
we have hope because of the victory in Jesus Christ. Yes, because he defeated sin and death. If you go down to verse 50 of 1 Corinthians 15, Paul goes on and says, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. And when it talks about sleeping, you know, Christians, we don't actually die, we sleep. Okay? We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. This is a message that I would turn to if I was doing a funeral for a Christian by the gravesite or whatever. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has been put on, So when this corruptible has put on incorruption and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Death is the enemy. Death will be swallowed up. And Jesus was the first one raised from the dead. And he defeated death. Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God. And there we are. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory. How? Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Because He lives. Because He lives. Because He's alive. Because He is risen. Because He is not there. We have victory. He gave us the victory. We overcome. We have victory over sin and death. Because He did that for us. And so, we simply say, thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. If you have nothing to give thanks for today, give thanks for this. We have a lot to be thankful for. Well, but maybe we'll wake up tomorrow morning and we'll, we'll like, I don't know, feel like not very thankful. Be thankful. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Victory is ours. We are, it says in Romans, more than conquerors. That means we've already won. It's a done deal. It's a done deal. But it all comes from Matthew 28, those first few few verses. The angel rolling the stone away. He's not here. He is risen. He is risen. And Jesus would declare this on the wall, John chapter 11. Maybe you remember this. Back in John chapter 11, when Lazarus had died and his sisters were, were, were mourning, And they were sorrowful because they love their brother just like we love our family members. And he came and Jesus wept with them, mourned with them. That's what you do in those situations. You mourn with those people. But he came and he actually wept and he was deeply distressed even though he knew what he was going to do. Why? I believe because he hates death. God despises death. I've heard, I've said this to you before. God despises death. He doesn't intend anybody to die. He doesn't, didn't want anybody to die. He didn't, he didn't give us the software to, 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 to be able to handle death because he didn't want anybody to die. And he's going to take care of it. But Jesus said in John 11, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, 
he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Yes, I like to hear that. Every time I, I, I use this verse, he asked the question, do you believe this? He's asking people today. Maybe you're watching on YouTube or Facebook or whatever, and you have not. The question to you is, do you believe this? Do you believe this, that Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life, and that if you believe in him, that he rose from the dead, that, then you will have eternal life also? Or are you skeptical? Are you doubting? It all comes down to faith. He challenges, the Bible is a book of faith. From the very beginning, it challenges mankind to believe. From the very first verse, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Taught that to my eight-year-old grandson. Yes, he can recite it. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Do you believe that? Do you? How many people look up at those stars and say, oh, there's no way? <laughs> you know, or they try to figure it out with, hey, don't lean on your own understanding, okay? <laughs> it's very limited. Extremely limited. It's it's better to go seek the counsel of the Lord. And the counsel of the Lord is written for us. And it just plainly declares that He created the heavens. And by the word of the Lord, it says in Psalm 33, it was. He spoke and it was. Simple as that. Let there be light. And there was light. Wow. But... The Bible is a book of faith that challenges us to believe that there is a God. Not only is He the Creator, He is your Redeemer. Creator, Redeemer, Savior. The Son of God. He challenges us to believe that. And He says, whoever lives and believes in Me shall never die. Do you believe this? This is a message of great hope for the future. And that's what I say. That's why I call it a living hope. Jeremiah 29, 13, I think it says, For I know the plans that I have for you. 11? Jerem sorry. Jeremiah 29, 11. I love people who know their Bibles. I knew it too. I just was checking you out. <laughs> For I know the plans that I have you. I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Who's talking? God. Are they plans for evil? No. Are they plans for good? To give you a future and a hope. Don't forget, it's future. A future and a hope. You need to take that home with you today. You have a future. Forever. And ever. And ever. Why? Because the stone was rolled away and he's not there anymore. That's what it comes down to. Do you believe that? John 20, verses 30 and 31, and we'll probably be there next week. John, the Gospel writer, Writes this down, this statement. This is the key to the Gospel of John right here, these two verses. John writes, Truly Jesus did many other signs. In the Gospel of John we saw seven. Other signs in the presence of His disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you may believe. That Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in His name. Yes. Wow. 
What a promise. That's what the, today is about. Happy Easter. Happy Resurrection Day. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Yes, that's what I was waiting for. <laughs> indeed, he is risen. Hallelujah. Such a great message of hope, a living hope. I want you to turn now in your Bibles, if you can find this. It's near the end of the New Testament. 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. <clears throat> we started out the service today with verse 3. I'm going to read it again. But this is where we are because of Jesus. Because that he lives. Because the stone was rolled away. Because death could not hold him. How many, how many different ways can we say it? How, how many different songs could we sing that we know? Do you have any Easter songs in your head now? You know? But I think this is important. As I was preparing notes for this uh, over the past few weeks, just, just two days ago, the Lord brought me to this. and says, I want this in here. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to His abundant mercy, <clears throat> why? <laughs> because of His abundant mercy, has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. That term, that phrase, begotten us again. It's the same as being born again. He has begotten us again. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things passed away. Behold, new things have come. New things have come. He has begotten us again. To a living hope. Why? Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Oh, let's go on though. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. Come on. <laughs> Amen. This is a tremendous. Yeah. Okay, what if you got the call from a, a lawyer today? Hey, he needs you to come in. One of your long lost relatives left you something. You know? Well, we have a relative. He is God, and he's not lost. But he has left us something. It's an inheritance. It's reserved in heaven for you. John, aren't you excited? You're on vacation for two weeks. Yeah, I, I know. And Friday after work, 5 o'clock, it was like, yee Yeah. You got a reservation for somewhere? In Florida. You're going to Florida. How are you getting there? You're going to drive down there, and then you're going to stay with your brother, and, and then you got what? Uh, how are you getting back? You're going to fly in a plane. They, they expect you? Are they expecting you? You got a ticket. You have a reservation. They might cancel it. Did you buy insurance? <laughs> this reservation cannot be canceled. <laughs> it is not canceled. Okay, it's reserved where? In heaven. And it says it's incorruptible, undefiled, and does not fade away. <laughs> Amen. It, it's not, you know, diminishing as we go through life. It doesn't fade away. It's there. This is a tremendous verse. Jesus said, don't lay up for yourselves treasures in, on earth where rust and moth destroy, 
He says, lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where moth and rust cannot destroy and thieves can't break in and steal it. You might have a 401k. It can be stolen. But your retirement plan in heaven can't be stolen. Why? Because Jesus. Because he, res- he was resurrected from the dead. And you believe in that. It says, to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice. There could have been a title, Rejoice. I mean, the angels are going to say it in one of the other versions. Rejoice! He is alive! We read where the, the ladies were running to go tell the disciples and they were filled with fear and what? Joy. Joy. Rejoice! In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while. There's that expression again, a little while. If need be, you have been grieved by various trials. That the genuineness of your faith, you see, your faith in Jesus begins, but it is often strengthened. And how is your faith in Him strengthened? Uh, Lots of times by trials in your life. The Word of the Lord tests you. If need be, you have been grieved by various trials that the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen you love though now you do not see him yet believing you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory receiving the end of your faith the salvation of your souls i i began i i got this scripture the lord gave me this scripture because i was actually thinking about mary and i was thinking about peter and thomas and the disciples and 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 John, the gospel gospel writer, in his first letter in First John, he says, you know, we beheld him, we we touched him, we heard him, we walked with him. And I thought, I haven't. When's the last time you saw Jesus in person? When's the last time you handled him, John? knew what that was like day after day for three years. Mary. Jesus is going to have to say to her, don't cling to me. She was probably grabbing him and going, Jesus, I lost you, and now you're back, and I'm never letting you go. Don't cling to me. He didn't say you can't touch him. Thomas touched, touched Jesus, didn't he? But I started to look up that thinking of myself. But Peter tells me, he redirected me, the Lord redirected me to 1 Peter, whom having not seen, you love. Jesus would say to Thomas, you know, you, you believe because you put your fingers in my hand. Blessed are those who don't see and yet believe. Whoming, whom having not seen you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing, you rejoice with joy, inexpressible and full of glory. Full of glory. Receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your soul. See, it comes down to Jesus saying, do you believe this? You know, it's funny, you know, you read the end of the Gospel of Mark, it'll say that even though Jesus presented himself to his disciples, they doubted. And who wouldn't? Who wouldn't? But he challenges us to believe that today. And if we do have that belief and that faith, then we have a great and living hope. 
right? A living hope for today and for our future and forever. And that is something to rejoice about. That is something to rejoice about. This is not the end. It's not the end. You know, I was, we were going to sing a, a final song. I'm, you know, and, th- and the song that they were going to sing, I love the song, um, Children of the Living God. Maybe we can start with that next week. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll have to see. But that's a, it's a great song. But I wanted to have you guys sing this with me. Okay? And I'm going to need your help. Okay? I can try. But all week long, I have had this in my head, this little chorus, not the whole hymn, the whole song, but just this little chorus here. And I didn't realize why I had it there. It was there all week, and, you know, it's like that's what the Lord does. He, he starts days in advance, and then finally comes through. Okay, you knucklehead, but it's been there for a reason. But this is the chorus. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future, life is worth the living just because he lives. Anybody familiar with that? Well, I'm going to need you. Why don't you all stand with me? The words will be up on the wall. And I'll try to start us out. And we're going to sing it at least three times. Okay? And then I'll close in prayer but sing this knowing that we have such a hope it's a living hope simply because jesus rose from the dead because he lives i can face tomorrow because he lives All fear is gone because I know He holds the future. Life is worth the living just because He lives. Because He lives, I can face tomorrow. Because He lives, all fear is gone. Because I know He holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives one more time because he lives i can face tomorrow Because He lives, fear is gone. Because I know He holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives hallelujah lord Lord, life is worth living because you hold the future because you live we thank you today for that lord that we can have that hope and we can have that future and that expectation lord god you you're coming back for your kids lord We don't have to fear anything, Lord God, because we have been given the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And I do pray that you would help us to live in that victory today and this week. And we pray that today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless.